I mean, I think the first problem is the fact that um, it's it, any sort of raising of these sort of issues is seen to be an attack on the Muslim community or seen to be racist. And so in that sense, I think you've, that's why I think there's this whole argument on should we call it honor killings, why not just call it domestic violence? Which, you know, I think is, is sort of, I find that outrageous, you know, in a sense, you know, again, it's trying to, it seems to me like a cover-up and a way of um, keeping dirty laundry in a community, supposedly, and uh, not, not bringing it out and not calling it what it's, what it, it's called in, in the community itself as well, you know. But it's a sort of PC um, attitude. And it's interesting because the PC attitude and the respect is for cultures, religions, beliefs, intolerable practices, and there's no such respect and rights for the women uh, or, or people in question, you know. And so in that sense, it just seems everything's gone upside down and inside out, basically, you know. So I think, first off, we need to be able to call it honor killing because that's what it is, you know. And um, we, we also, and, and to make it clear that it's not racist to discuss it, it's actually a human rights issue. And, and I think for, for you yourself and for, for any of us who've advocated on behalf of women's rights from um, the Middle East, North Africa, Asia, or you know, from those who are deemed or perceived to be Muslim communities, which I have a problem with because again it's such a large and different opinions and you know and basically it's given the impression that it's an, an Islamist community and everybody wants Sharia and everybody loves to be veiled and um, you know everybody's happy with uh, honor killings and it's just domestic violence you know sort of thing but uh, but in that sense I think that um, there's we need to be able to call it what it is and we need to be able to start talking about it and highlighting it and see it as a way and actually highlighting honor killings is defending the rights of women and girls and not you know r not racist in fact it's racist not to do anything about it you know uh, like so many other things that cultural racism doesn't last to talk about and actually it's it's racist to keep silent in a sense um, and also you know the political will to be able to challenge it isn't there because I think in a sense, I've said this before too, I think the Western government policy in general doesn't have a problem with political Islam. It has a problem with Islamic terrorism or what it calls extremism. And so it's quite happy if there's Sharia in Afghanistan and honor killings there or whatever. Um, and even it's not so offended with honor killings here in Europe itself, for, for a very long time, people were given reduced sentences, the fathers or men who perpetrated this in Europe itself, you know. So in that sense, I think it's quite happy to leave the community, so-called community, to its own Islamic organizations and Sharia courts and so on and so forth. Um, and that's why, in a sense, it's important for us to say, no, this is a rights issue. There needs to be uh, the will to address it. First of all, ban it. Uh, but again, it's not enough to be banned because it's banned in some countries um, uh, where it still goes on because the political will is in there to actually arrest the perpetrators and to see it as, uh, you know, something that's despicable uh, and uh, rather than something that's honorable to do. I mean, I think it's just, it's sort of, I think it's government policy to keep, you know, it's a policy of minoritism where it's, you know, ghettoizing groups of people and relegating them to the, um, to their own rules and regulations and trying to minimize um, the sort of contact they have with, um, with the society at large in a sense. So um, in that sense, I think it's both policy and it le becomes practice as well. The example of the Algerian woman who went to court in Germany. Uh, she was uh, facing domestic violence um, and um, um, in Germany, like in many countries, you need to have, a, there's a waiting period before you can get a divorce. And unless there's extenuating circumstances like violence. And uh, the judge, who was a woman German judge, she said that, uh, she told the woman that she accepts that she's been um, 
facing domestic violence, but because she's Algerian and her, she's Muslim and it's her culture, she's got to refer to the Quran and to Islamic law, and and therefore that violence is acceptable, and therefore she won't give her the divorce that she's due, and in in a sense that just shows very much so the prevalent cultural relativism that that women and girls often come up against which is that it's your culture and your religion well hold on i mean she wants a divorce it's obviously not her culture to be beaten to a pulp um and and so in a sense it's actually taking the ruling elites culture and the culture of the political islamic movement and making it the culture of everybody and very often a lot of these people are struggling against it trying to get out of it trying to just survive and uh, and live a normal life um um and live to tell the tale you know and and they're being uh, told basically that it's your culture your religion you've got to sort of you know uh, accept it and so in a sense i think there is that attitude prevalent in the police in 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 the in in the society in general you know um which allows for this to happen and that's why it's not enough for it to be banned it's there's got to be a political will to criminalize it and to change attitudes and change the way people think and and regard something like honor killings i mean it reminds me a lot like fgm because i remember 20 years ago <coughs> having arguments with feminists and women's rights campaigners about how i shouldn't be calling it female genital mutilation and how it should be called circumcision and how i need to respect people's culture and i actually lived 2 years in the sudan where some of my closest friends had been mutilated and the pain and suffering they went through i thought there's no way in hell i'm going to just sit back and call it circumcision and you know respect that sort of culture and 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 things so and i think we need to go through that phase where now fgm is called fgm routinely it's it's criminalized in in many countries and you know there's this there is this turn of attitude towards it and i think that's what what's needed with honor killings as well and and so the law and political will are key in in helping that come about and i think just keep talking about it and just keep raising awareness and highlighting the issue um i think just one honor killing and the savagery around it and the brutality and the pain that the girl felt and went through is so it is enough to make a whole world stop still really you know and in a sense i think it is possible to um mobilize support and action for it um i i think there's no political will but there's never political will to do anything that's decent and pro human beings anyway it's all through pressure and that's why progressive social movements left movements working class movements women's rights movements have managed to force a lot of things on on states and governments and uh even you know uh, things that we take for granted living in britain for example child labor laws or domestic violence laws these are things that were fought for it was you know and and in a sense i think we need to fight for um the fact that honor killing is a crime uh, for the complete criminalization for it and for it to be seen as something um so vile for anyone to do um as well as ensuring that people are prosecuted um entire families are prosecuted if it has to be um in order to give a clear message um that it's unacceptable but also um you know to promote a um a culture of equality and real respect for human beings um that very often means leaving religion and your culture to your personal beliefs and practices but only as far as it doesn't affect and hurt yourself and other people but also the fact that it it should be possible and it has to be possible to criticize things that are wrong uh, that's the way society progresses and um it, it's crucial to be able to criticize the practice of honor killings uh, and to to begin and end with the human being i think it it makes it ensures that you can't go wrong you know the other thing too is uh, there's some you know a woman who wants to get out of the, there's so many situations where um and a lot of the famous names that we know of for example like Fadima Sandell in Sweden and 
uh, Benaz, Mahmoud, um, are people who reached out and tried to get help. Um, and they weren't given the help and the protection that they were deserved. Uh, and in a sense, that sort of the, the need to create that protection for, for these women is, is crucial and girls. Um, so it's whether it's, you know, non-governmental, non-profit organizations, women's rights organizations doing it. But first and foremost, it's the duty of the state, you know, and this is the problem when the state relegates its duties to organizations with hardly any money and resources and a huge human catastrophe like this, obviously we're not going to get anywhere. And so in that sense, I think um, we need to put pressure for there to be money and um, political will around addressing and giving protection to women who deserve it, giving it to them from the moment they approach the police. Protect them first, ask questions later, you know. Well, I, I hope I'm also judged on my personality. I mean, I don't think, you know, uh, I'm, I've got men mauling at me, because, <laughs> pawing at me as I walk down the street because I'm not wearing a veil, you know. Again, I think that's the Islamist interpretation of, you know, uh, the fact that you need to be covered up in order to, one, be respected for your mind and so on and so forth. Um, and that your body is so, causes such chaos and calamity that unless you're uh, covered up, uh, you know, that you can't be respected. It's nonsense, you know. Uh, but also that you find it liberating. Well, um, I'm sure you're always going to find people who find the most vile things liberating. I'm sorry, you know, um, and, and make excuses for it. Um, but socially speaking, on a large scale, the veil is not liberating. It's very often forced. Uh, there's huge pressures that go along with it. And even in countries like Iran, where it's compulsory, um, in one city alone, in one month, the Islamic regime arrested one million women for improper veiling in one city in one month. And so, uh, you know, again, the, the, I think it's, it's not the case. Again, criticizing the veil is not an attack on women who are veiled in the same way that criticizing FGM is not an attack on girls who've, got, who've been mutilated, and in the same way criticizing honor killings is not an attack on, you know, all Muslims or all people who come from places where honor killings take place. You know, so in that sense, I think it's actually uh, an important issue to be raised from a perspective of women's rights and a defense of women's rights. And I think from that perspective, it is important to challenge the veil and to challenge honor killings uh, and so on and so forth, because I do think they all sort of, again, I, I, as I said before, it's, um, it's a question of degree. The, the attitude that makes a woman veil is, um, if you pull that logic along, is the attitude that then says, if she's improperly veiled, she needs to be stoned. Um, she needs to be killed. She needs to be um, brutalized and, you know, tormented and humiliated. Um, so I don't see it as being liberating in any way.